few news articles that I thought were interesting. Gmail was in trouble. The conservatives complained that they felt like Gmail was blocking their political ads, so they have now added a feature to never put any campaign emails from anybody into spam. So they're going to launch this pilot, and so that means I think all of our inboxes are going to be full of political ads. But they, they went to court, and they said, would it satisfy you if we didn't block any political mail at all? And they said, yes, that would work. So that's what they think the fairest solution is. So that'll be fun. Um, this is pretty surprising from Mark Rusinovich, who is really important Microsoft developer. Uh, the guy, just internals, he is saying we should abandon C and C++ and switch to Rust. Um, the Rust is going to be included in the Linux kernel in the next version, according to Linus Thorvalds. So um, some of my friends that use Rust say they don't think it's really ready for this. But anyway, it is certainly much safer, especially for Windows. I don't know if it's such a big deal for Linux, but um, Windows suffers from a lot of security flaws that come from using C and C-derived languages. And Rust would prevent those. So this result is not terribly surprising. This is a very common thing where they try drugs that already exist that have already been proven to be safe and find an off-label use. The amazing thing is how they did it. They did this without any trials in animals or humans. They did this all on a computer. They are able to take the proteins in the medicine and simulate the proteins that are found in the body and calculate what effect it's going to have. So just from a computer simulation, they claim they know what protein is involved in the social lack of communication, which is the main symptom of autism. People, autistic people cannot detect social cues. And they found out what protein causes that. And they found a drug that will prevent that. So they're going to, I guess, now they're going to test it in mice, and then they're going to test it in people. But um, this is really new. This is something I've heard all my life is science fiction. Someday they'll be able to just test things with computer simulation instead of on real living organisms. I had no idea they were anywhere near this. I used to do computer modeling of proteins, and we were nowhere near this. This was like centuries away. It was, this was just insane. I had no idea. It's amazing. I don't know if they're just lying or crazy. They, it's incredible they can do this. And they don't say much about how they did it, but I actually tried to do this for my thesis, and it was completely impossible. But that was a long time ago. Anyway, if they can do that, that's awesome. This is what all the uh, animal rights people say. They say, you don't need to test things in animals, just test them on computers. And the answer from all the medical community, including me, has always been, just shut up. That's not good enough. You can't do it in a computer. You have to test it in animals because it's not the same. But maybe we're reaching the point where you can test stuff in computers. This I was really pleased to read. See, as you know, the Earth is warming up. We're in big trouble. It, the climate is already shot. And we're going to have to artificially cool it. But the current plans to suck carbon dioxide out of the air are insanely too slow, too expensive. We're never going to be able to scale them up. But this is brilliant. All you have to do is build an airplane that will fly at 43,000 feet, somewhat higher than commercial jets, and then dump aerosol in the air. And you dump it around the poles. Because the most important thing is to cool the poles off so they will freeze again and stop making the sea level rise. That's the most important climate problem. And they say that can be done, and it would only cost like $11 billion a year, which is really achievable. All the other solutions will cost like a million times more, an incredible amount of money we can't possibly have. This you could do. I mean, our, the American um, economy is $100 trillion. And as you see, the Congress just spends a trillion on this, five trillion on that, two trillion on that all the time. This is only $11 billion a year. That's really pocket change for the US government. So this sounds pretty great. We could just be cooling off the poles. And as they point out, you know, if uh, there's almost nobody living at the poles, so if it has weird side effects, you won't be affecting them so much. So this sounds like a pretty good idea. Sounds like we're going to have to do it pretty soon. It's the first practical solution I've heard. The only other thing I've heard that has any hope of working is to dump a lot amount, large amount of rust in the ocean, which will then combine with carbon and fall to the bottom and greatly pollute the ocean with all that junk. But you could rust is obtainable in mass quantity. You dump millions of tons of rust in the ocean. And that, that's the only thing that would be big enough to suck enough carbon out of the air. But that would probably have a lot of other consequences. Yeah, there was a theory in the second free comics book. I haven't seen that one. But yeah, this is the first theory I've heard that is even remotely practical. Um, so Biden 
just had an interview yesterday, and he said, oh, the pandemic is over. And we're like, what? Wait, since when? All the doctors are crazy. I mean, people are going to stop getting vaccines. Are you out of your mind? I mean, the rate of death has fallen to a relatively low level, but it's still a lot of people. And we're just going to have another surge, of course, as everybody drops all their precautions. So all the doctor types are pretty mad. Um, the more political types, like uh, there's Walk Bob Walker, is the chair of the medicine. He's involved in a lot of big government things. He says, well, you know, what he means is that we have to learn to live with it. We can't have these precautions. But he's got a scientific way to decide whether it's okay to like go eat inside a restaurant. He just began that now after two years, just in San Francisco, because he figures out he doesn't want to eat inside until the uh, positivity rate falls down. The asymptomatic test rate is now 1.6% in San Francisco, which means that one out of 60 people that you meet test positive for COVID. Therefore, you can calculate what the chance of getting it if you eat indoors at a restaurant is. That's his plan. He's, so from his point of view, it's just beginning to make it possible to resume a little bit of normal life, but he still wears a mask and takes a lot of precautions. So I think, as usual, Biden has clumsily said something unwise. The truth is, you can have more of a normal life now. And we do. More people are going out a little bit. Some conferences are happening. But uh, the Twitch screen blurs look like the Wi-Fi access points are limiting each computer's bandwidth. Oh, no, I don't think so. Um, I, quite the opposite. Yeah, see, I have a ridiculous amount of speed. So you might just have to refresh your browser. And my thing's showing green. As far as my OBS at this end says it's very healthy, which I would say it is. Um, City College seems to have switched to a backup system that doesn't limit my, fresh, my uh, speed at all. Anyway, um, here's, here's one. Eric Fagelding is one of the doctors that's very, very angry at saying, you know, the pandemic is not over. It is a little blurry. Well, um, I wonder if I can do anything. I can probably, let's see. If I go to properties, it's set to 1280. Well, let's try changing it to high. See if that does anything good. Oh, that was the wrong thing. That's the video capture. That doesn't have to be high. Wait a minute. Um, I want the display capture to be set to a higher bandwidth. There we are, properties. Um, display. Hmm. Doesn't seem to be anything I can adjust here. Um, hmm. Well. Um, Stream, output, aha, uh -huh. video bit rate. Maybe I can make it higher. Um, apparently I can. How about this? High CPU use higher quality. Let's try this. See what that does, okay? I made a couple of changes. See if that doesn't make any difference. Anyway. Um, let's see what time it is. Got another couple of minutes here. Um, this I thought was pretty amazing. They just had a serious earthquake in Russia, or in China, and this is why this building didn't fall down. This is 700 tons hanging from a, like a pendulum just for the purpose of absorbing the vibration when an earthquake happens, and apparently it worked. It waved around to stop the building from falling down, so that's pretty impressive. Much better. Thanks. Good. Thanks for honey. Thanks for telling me. All right. So, uh, well, I can't seem to scroll. Nope, there, finally let me scroll. Yeah, and that's not worth mentioning. Uh, this is, of course, a big deal. Um, it's come out in other classes, too. Uh, romance scams and mother scams against elderly people are extremely popular. I think it's the number two most common scam now is romance scams and many other elder scams. So an enormous amount of money is being stolen by social engineering these people pretending that you're their grandson left somewhere and you need money and that sort of thing. So uh, a lot of my students have had their family members scammed this way. So it is a thing to be aware of. And this warn, artificial blowhole is designed your, uh, to... Your elders are. This is another awesome thing. This thing is a floating ship and the water comes in and as the waves go up and down, it pushes this air in and out like a piston, which they blow through a hole to make it move fast and then it drives the turbine. And this way they're able to harvest energy 24 hours a day, day and night, from the motion of the waves in a floating ship. And it has, I think, like 70 or 80% efficiency. 
a clutching it. And so they're saying they could take this to island nations that have no infrastructure and just float this on the outside and generate power from it. And this is, I think, a, a, a very useful bit of green power. So that's a good thing. And uh, this one was pretty amazing. Uh, uh, certain gyms in London are having their money stolen. What happens is some woman is going into, the, presumably, is going into the woman's locker room. She's picking the locks. She's stealing people's purses. Then she gets their phone. Then she gets their credit card. And when that notice goes to the phone, the phones are set by default to show the message on the lock screen. You do not need to unlock the phone to see a message. It's true of my phone, too. That's true of most phones by default. So she can totally um, reset the credit card pin by the SMS with the phone. And she then she always goes to the same stores and buys stuff, and she hits the same gyms over and over, and they're all getting um, expensive stores. Each one of them is losing thousands of dollars, thousands of pounds, and uh, having difficulty getting it back. So they're saying uh, the best solution would be don't, don't take your phone or anything to the gym, and if you do, change it so the lock, store, lock screen doesn't display the messages, so it helps. But anyway, it's another interesting scam. The still or near still pictures will not blur, but if I scroll the web pages, the blurs come. Hmm. All right. Well, uh, I changed it, so it should be better than it was, but uh, I appreciate the feedback. I'm not sure what else to change. Anyway, let me stop this one, and let's go to the official stuff.